Oh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, a very warm welcome to Silver Tent TV. I'm your host, Siobhan Reardon, along with my dog, Elsa, who occasionally might like to join in. Um, we're, the Silver Tent is a global online community of women over 50. It's a place where women can come to be supported and nurtured to realise those dreams that are still to be realised. And it's also a place where, um, that provides a platform uh, for women's um, uh, incredible wealth of wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the world. Um, it's for us to be able to share that. And I'm delighted today to have Jane Duncan Rogers with us, one of those amazing women out there um, who has a great deal of wisdom to share about uh, dying and death. Jane, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you. It's great to be here. So Jane is the founder of Before I Go Solutions, um, a, a, a an organization that supports people in terms of planning for end of life um, and um, it's been going for two and a half years um, since her husband sadly passed away. So um, Jane I kind of wanted to begin with could you tell us a little bit about your story and um, and how Before I Go Solutions came about? Sure. Well, my husband died in 2011 after a year of living with cancer and um, we knew that he was going to die and in that, what turned out to be his last year, I had received an email from a friend saying you must get in to answer these particular questions and they were all really practical ones like um, what are your passwords and what uh, kind of coffin do you want and uh, how would you want your body to be dressed? quite hard hitting and pretty difficult to ask when you know somebody is actually dying. But we did do it and we actually had a wonderful time doing it, which was surprising. However, he, he did die in December 2011 and about two and a half years later, I started writing a book about this. Now, I had always known that I would need to write about this. I, had, I was a writer, I already had a blog. And writing was going to be partly my way of processing the whole thing. And that was my first book, Gifted by Grief. It came out and I thought, I didn't really think much more than that. I thought maybe I would do some grief counselling because I'd been a coach and, and, uh, and a psychotherapist and had had all that background. But what actually happened was that people responded to the chapter in the book about these questions. And after about maybe six or seven people in the space of a few days saying, I need to answer these questions too. I'm like, ah, right. Okay, message here, I need to act on this. And basically I researched a bit more, put some more questions together, uh, put our local workshop on in, my, uh, in the local community and it sold out with a huge waiting list. And, and that's really how Before I Go Solutions started. Um, maybe about 18 months later, I set it up as a community interest company. That's a not-for-profit. And, and we've, well, one of the main things I've discovered is that people need help to think about the fact that we are actually going to die. Nobody really wants to think about it. I know. It's, it's really interesting that you, you say that. I am... Um... I spent seven years um, running a HIV organization in the early 1990s. And this is when, um, you know, people still thought of it being a disease from monkeys and um, people were um, evangelizing that it was God's punishment, etc., etc. And, you know, we were doing between three and five funerals a week. So, and, and this was the young generation. Um, so at a very, you know, quite an early point in my life, I understood the importance of talking about dying and death and I, I'm still shocked and amazed at how little people t talk about it it's the one thing in life that we're guaranteed <laughs> we're gonna die <laughs> yes it is amazing it's like you know in a world where people apparently like to be in charge and know what's going to happen and plan and all that the fact that we don't actually plan for this event is now amazing to me. And yet 
before my husband died, I hadn't thought about it either, you know. So I have sympathy and I know where people are coming from when they say they don't want to talk about this because I've been there too. But the fact is, it makes it a lot easier, a lot easier for those left behind afterwards if there had been in, um, conversations, instructions, something written down and and that's what Before I Go Solutions does, of course. It helps people to create good end of life plans. And I think the thing that really touched me deeply when you were sharing your story is um, about how it brought you and your husband closer. Yeah, that was amazing. Because I tell you, this friend of ours had to send three emails before we actually took action. We were resistant, both of us, he in particular. But I knew that it needed to be done because I could see where she was coming from, a very old friend. It was a very loving act. And I knew it would help me afterwards. And so the really lovely thing was that we did, it felt like we were doing a project together. And we'd been really good at doing projects together, you know, like renovating houses or um, we had written some books together and things like that. And, and this felt like another one. It had all the same qualities. We were working on something together towards a common goal. And it was such a loving space. And we were so glad we had done it afterwards just because of that experience. So yeah, it was, it was really, really good. I, I remember with my mum, she was on the um, <clears throat> uh, dementia pathway for seven years and I was her primary carer. And um, I remembered uh, um, about 10 years before she got dementia, um, she came to visit me in Devon. And I, I remember it so distinctly. We were, um, it was a beautiful summer's day and we were down by the river and um, at a pub having a beautiful lunch. And I just um, started to talk to her, you know, how, how do you want it to be when you die? And I remember it being one of the most amazing um, moments that we shared in our life together. Um, and so she talked about her funeral, what she wanted that to look like. And she was really insistent that she didn't want to be kept hanging on, um, you know, um, and lots of machines and interventions. She wanted to go quietly and, and peacefully. But I remember that closeness that that um, it took us to a whole new level in our relationship from just exploring what we would like death to be like. Mm. Now, I am um, I'm someone that has um, heart disease, as you're aware of, and I've been privileged to get access to your big workbook, um, as you call it. Um, and so I just want you to tell us a little bit about that tool, because I found it incredibly practical and helpful. Yes, okay. So the big workbook, and that actually stands for Before I Go, but it is a big workbook and it's a big conversation to have. It's, this is the end result of those questions that I asked my husband, first of all. It has been refined and researched and there's quite a lot more questions now that, than there were when I first asked him then. Um, and that is what it is. It is actually a workbook with spaces for you to complete either on your computer or by hand writing it. Um, your answers to all the kinds of questions that are going to be needed if, uh, if you're thinking about this in advance. So for example, there's a little tick box. Have you got a will? Have you got a power of attorney? Have you got an advanced decision? Because those are separate things, but then in, that have to be done separately. Mm. But then within the rest of the workbook, there are other questions such as, um, the details of what you might want for your funeral. Now, did you know that there were 25 questions that need to be asked about that subject alone? That's a lot. It's, um, it helps the people who are then organizing it to take action knowing that you knew that they were going to do that. And that is incredibly consoling. But there's a couple of other things as well that I want to mention because people don't think about these sorts of things. Um, I had one lady who, complete, who was on one of the courses early on and she thought she'd covered everything. She was actually dealing with a terminal diagnosis and she discovered that she'd forgotten about her cat, what to do about the cat. Mm. Because of that section in the workbook, she was able to really give it some thought and get it taken care of. Um, there's another one which... Uh, people, you, this usually causes some laughter because I, I ask the question, is there anything that you um, 
would rather your family don't know about any kind of secret or do you have any journals that you'd rather that they didn't read if you do you need to think about it in advance because otherwise they are going to discover these things and that's there's not a problem with that but it's important that you think about it so it's a conscious decision that you make yeah uh, tell me so i i um as I was going through the workbook, I kind of realized a number of things. But first of all, I felt, if I'm filling this in, am I creating a self-fulfilling prophecy here? You know, because I have no intention of popping my clogs, um, so to speak. Um, and so there's a part of me that's really cautious about filling it in um, because I don't want to call that into my life. Um, yeah. you know, I want to, to live a long, vibrant life. Yeah. And then the, the other half, half of me is going, well, actually, no, because the people that are going to be left behind, are, this is about love, isn't it? This is about my love for those people. That I want to make it as easy and simple and straightforward. Um, so I even had my landlady around the other day, and I was saying, right, I'm leaving you my, my fridge, my cooker, my washing machine. They're, they're all yours. <laughs> um, so it's like, it's like really practical things like that, isn't it? And I noticed the password you have to give your password, your bank account. Mm -hmm. And that was another thing that I then started to think about as someone without any family. I, I was like, who's my executor? And yeah. who could I possibly ask? That's a really interesting question for yeah. anyone out there. Who would you want to be the executor of your estate? Yeah. Luckily I have very little estate, but you know, it's still an important question. Really, really important questions here. And actually, I'll just mention my um, latest book before I go because I cover this. And there's a chapter about if you don't have children or your children are, are very far away or they're um, not around, then that is um, that's covered in that because this is quite a big subject. Mm. Um, but let me come back to the self fulfilling prophecy thing because this is the, you know. People don't always call it that. Maybe they're a bit superstitious. You can maybe identify with that a bit more. How I think about this is that my belief is that we, that this body here is not who I am. It, who I am flows through this body as a temporary casing, if you like, a temporary carriage that contains me. Now, when this body dies, I will still be around just not in this form. However, the practicalities of being what we call a human being on this dimension are that there will be a body left behind afterwards. It's just like, it's just like how we used to talk about rubbish or, or recycling. You know, we have to think about it. We have to put it in the right place. We have to deal with it in the appropriate way. And of course we do do that in terms of body disposal and the different methods that there are of that. But because on this level, in this dimension, we lead a life. There is all the associated, associated stuff that goes with that and we have to take care of it. So with a plan, what you're doing is yes, you're taking a focused period of time, maybe over time and that's okay, to look at the fact that yes, there will be a body left and I need to take care of it. Once it's been taken care of, all those ideas, all those questions answered. All that has to be done is that's kept up to date with in accordance with your views and the circumstances that happen in your life. There's no need even to think about it anymore. So it's kind of like by focusing on the end of life, you actually are becoming more alive because you don't need to think about it anymore. It brings you back into the present in a very strange sort of way. That's what I've found anyway. And so I'm, if I'm, imagine I'm, I'm in the audience now listening and actually I want to find out more about Before I Go Solutions. Um, uh, first of all, just, just let us know about your website. It's www.beforeigosolutions.com. Yeah. Um, and what is it, so if I make contact with you, what are the kind of ways that you could help me? We have, um, well, there's the book that I mentioned, the, and there is the workbook. The workbook is just the, all the questions, as I mentioned before. The, the book itself is the thinking behind the questions. So you don't need both of them. Each of them stand alone, but for some people, two together might work better. Um, but we also have an online course, the Before I Go Method, which 
helps people to actually put this into practice because I'm really sorry to tell you this, but most people listening to this are probably going to get all enthusiastic and think it's a good idea and then nothing will happen. Mm. It, that is normal. That's what I discovered. And that's why I did the courses and eventually put it online um, as the before I go method. And that runs regularly throughout the year. And that's to help people gather together and do it together. It's a lot easier when you do that. Um, we also have a training academy where I'm training other people to be uh, before I go method licensed facilitators and bring that to their own local community so that there can be an in-person connection because I think that's really important and um, nothing replaces being in person I don't think even though this is wonderful to be able to do things like this however the first place to start is I would say with my free quiz how prepared are you because that is just 10 questions, you can answer them within probably under a minute, and it's going to give you a taste of how, well, of how prepared you are for a good end of life in terms of these questions. And those are just 10 of the, I think, 140 questions in the workbook. So that would be where I would suggest that you start. And there's loads of other things on the website as well. So, yeah. Well, I, I can't encourage people enough. Um, I think what you have done is, inspiring and um, that it comes from such a powerful story of, of the journey that you shared with your husband as well it makes it even more um, significant and I really encourage people to get in touch if you if you love the people around you um, then this is a conversation you need to have and you never know it can create something really magical with you and that person long 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 before they die yeah yeah, exactly. And I always say that a good end of life plan is a great going away present. Mm -hmm. We don't usually think about it like that, but it does work. <laughs> Wonderful. Jane, it's a perfect way to finish. Thank you so much. And, and from as someone who has had the benefit of your wisdom, um, I really want to personally thank you. Uh, you've helped me enormously. And uh, your work, I think, is so inspiring out there in the world. So a real a uh, bow, deep bow to you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Wonderful. Wherever you are in the world, may the sun shine in your heart, even if it's not in your skies. This is Siobhan and Elsa signing off, and Elsa decided to stay quiet throughout it. Enjoy yourselves. Bye-bye.